Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. This is to tell the truth. I'm Gary Moore. I must admit it's a heck of a way to lead a parade from the back. But like the fellow says, it's what's up front that counts. You can see I'm surrounded by three lovely drum majorettes here. Normally there are four drum majorettes with this organization. But the fourth one is going to be our contestant. She's waiting right there, backstage, along with the members of our panel. And we're going to meet them all right after these commercials. Gentlemen, Gary Moore. Thank you. Hi, again. Ah. Thank you very much. And I hope that you're as pleased as we are that all this week in our guest panel chair, we have Mr. Bennett Surf. Hi, I'm Bennett. I'm pleased. I'm pleased. <laughs> and Bennett, how would you like that band we got just for you, you know? Well, I, I'm used to that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Happens on every show. Every show. Oh, what's my line? I thought they had like one piccolo and a tissue paper and a comb. You're, you're exaggerating. <laughs> This is your first time on to tell the truth. And I'm scared to death. Oh, oh come on, you're among oh, friends. Nothing. It seems incredible to me. I mean, after all, you're one of the originators of the whole panel business. How come you've never been on to tell the truth in 20 years? Well, while we were doing What's My Line every week, uh, we thought that uh, it would be confusing if I suddenly popped up on another show. And besides, I was always terrified that if I came on this show, I'd be confronted with three John Child Dailies. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have stood that. <laughs> Now, let's greet the other members of our panel. We got Bill Cullen down there. Hello, William. Hello, Gary. Thank you. I don't have to introduce her. That's Peggy Cass. Hi, Hi. Peggy. And another good friend of Bennett's, Kitty Carlisle. Hi, Kitty. So, what do you say we throw Bennett to the Lions? Let's go to work and see what happens. Let us now meet our drum Majorette. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Kim Smith. Number two. My name is Kim Smith. Number three. My name is Kim Smith. Okay, and of course the problem is to find out which one is the real Kim Smith, and here is Kim Smith's story. It goes like this. I, Kim Smith, am the head drum majorette, baton twirler, and captain of the Thunderers Musical Corps. I think our band is something special. For two years now, in competition with bands from all over the country, the Thunderers have won the title of Grand National Musical Corps Champions. Also, my fellow baton twirlers and I have won over 2,000 individual awards, and I myself have won several state championships. The Thunderer's fame is not only within this country, but international. For some time, we've crossed the border into Canada and played on various occasions there. But our next move is across the Atlantic. Prince Rainier has invited us to play on the Riviera for Bastille Day. Signed, Kim Smith. And Peggy, you seem to be delighted with all this uproarious goings on. You want to start the questioning? Yes, I love it. Number three, where are the Thunderers from? Um, basically from Huntington and the northern part of Long Island. Oh, uh, number one, in the middle of the... Do you play at the, at the Giant Games ever? Right. Thank you. Number two, don't you get cold in that little outfit you've got on there like in a November day? Yes. So what do you do? We freeze. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, how many thunderers are there? There's 110 altogether. Thank you. And, uh... Thank you, Peggy. I'll tell you, the baton twirlers I was standing beside, uh, right out there, they had, they had goosebumps as big as pineapples. Still smiling, however. <laughs> Bennett? Uh, number one, what makes you decide to be, become a baton twirler? Well, I've been twirling since I was about five years old. And I started classes when I was around seven. And I, I enjoy doing it. It's, I get enjoyment out of it, so. 
Number two, did you have to take a course of study to become a baton twirler? Not really. I took classes. My sister was a twirler with the Thunderers when they first began. And I tagged around, and they eventually accepted me. Thank you, Bennett. And the kidding? Number three, how long do you practice when, when Gary tried to do his salute with the baton and nearly hit himself in the nose? <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> um, depends on what you're doing. Like, if you have a harder... Um, trick, then you have to practice longer. How long do you practice? Do you mean as a group? No, you, you yourself. Um, I, right now I only practice with the group. I usually don't spend that much time. Thank there. you. Number two, what is the average age of the Thunderers? Oh, usually around 16, but there are some college students and there are a few junior high students also. And number one, who started the group? It was started, it started out as 16 girls. They were a class for girls. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty. That takes us down to Bill Cullen. I don't think... I, I know the Huntington-Long Island group, uh, the, like there are more than one in Huntington-Long Island. Number one, are you from Long Island, too? Yes, I am. Uh, number two, is there any special training? Uh, you say you went to school to become a baton twirler? No, there were certain camps during the summer that I went to where they taught you various tricks. Thank you. Number three, do they give scholarships to baton twirlers? In college, they do. Yes. Uh, number, number one, there are two famous girls from the University of Purdue who, uh, who are baton twirlers. They're very well known. Do you know what those two girls are called? No, I don't. Uh, number, number... And that does us in for a questioning period. On the basis of what we've learned, we must now vote. And we vote for either number one, or for number two, or for number three. $50 is the cost of a wrong vote, $500 in the event that nobody guesses right. And Peggy, you must start, my friend. Well, as I was looking at the three of them, number I used to do this myself. I wasn't very good at it. But I thought number one looked like the real one. Okay, that's one for one. And Bennett, what do you think? Well, I voted for number two because she admitted that she froze at cold uh, events. And by God, I've seen these poor little girls freezing at them. So I voted for number two. We're going down the line. It's one for one and one for two and Kitty Carlisle. Well, I want to say I think they're marvelous. I love the sound you all made. It's really very stirring. But I voted, I think I'm wrong. I think, I voted for number three. I think she's probably a ballet dancer. The way she pointed her toe and held herself. But I voted for three. All right, we got a tie all down the line. Bill Cullen, uh, what are you going to do? I agree with Kitty. I think she's wrong, and I voted for number one. <laughs> <laughs> you think? All right, that's the way it goes around here. Let's find out about it. What do you think there at home? Here we go. Will the real Kim Smith please... Stand up. One, two, uh, two, oh, one. Wow. Ah! Good shot, Kitty. <laughs> Kim, in a minute we're going to put you to work, so why don't you go back and join the Thunderers while I find out about your imposters. You can take your baton, go back and join your friends. While we find out about number one, who got two wrong votes, what is your real name, please, and what do you do? My name is Laura Ferris, and I'm a student at Catherine Gibbs in New York. Secretarial student. Yeah. And number two, you got one wrong vote. What is your real name, please, and what My do you do? My name is Betsy Burr, and I'm a student at the Calhoun School in New York. Uh-huh. All right, let's get a little uh, advanced look at what's going to be happening over in Monaco. We are proud to present the grand champion Thunderers Musical Corps under the direction of Joe Anderson and Gloria Smith.
And thank you, Kim Smith. Thank you, imposters. And above all, thank you, Thunderers, for being here with us on To Tell the Truth. Thanks so much. to a really abrupt change. Our next guest knows a great deal about a very fascinating subject, prisoner of war brainwashing. We'll meet him in a moment as the Tell the Truth staggers forward. I'm here. Where we belong. Share the music of love. And now let's meet our authority on brainwashing. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Keith Douglas Young. Number two. My name is Keith Douglas Young. Number three. My name is Keith Douglas Young. Okay, and here is Keith Douglas Young's story, if you'll follow it along. I, Keith Douglas Young, am a former Air Force major and ex-Buffalo hunter. In a life always fraught with danger, I have survived five plane crashes and two shipwrecks. As a military officer, I interrogated enemy prisoners of war and was an instructor of survival, evasion, resistance, and escape. I have been a prisoner of war myself, but I managed to escape. There are 11 ways out of a prisoner of war camp, eight of which are legitimate. To this day, I dare not return to the Far East in any capacity, as the communists have placed a price upon my head. One million dead and two million alive. Signed, Major Keith Douglas Young. And Kitty Carlisle. Thank you. Number, uh, Major uh, D uh, Young, number two. Um, does brainwashing really work? Absolutely, it's been proven. And how long does it take to brainwash? It depends, the upon, it depends upon the person entirely. Average. There's no set average. Thank you. Number one, it says here that there's a million something placed on your head and a, a dead and two million alive. A million what? A million one. And how much is that in, a, in, in sort of dollars? It would be hard to make a translation. I'd say about $18,000. That's a lot anyway, isn't it? Uh, number three, can you give me one illegitimate way of escaping from a prison camp? One way? Yeah, an illegitimate way. You say there are eight legitimate ways. Right. Eleven illegitimate. Yeah. Uh, get one of the guards to help you out. That's not... Uh, two, number two, what is a legitimate way? Well, the legitimate way would be by uh, ransom, either cash or personnel. And number one, what is another legitimate way? I'd say the best way would be to escape. Is that legitimate? Certainly. I, I see. Number three, is it not true that most prisoners of war have a duty to try to escape? That is correct. Every, in every country? I th well, I can only talk for what I know. And number two, did you get out? I did. How did uh, you do it? That's not, uh... That's for, not part of the story. You're I not going to tell it. <laughs> Classified information. I'm sorry. We go on down to Bill Cullen. Uh, I'm interested in the, in the question Kitty asked about the legitimate ways of getting out. There are eight and three, I then imagine, uh, which are not legitimate. Number, uh, number three, what are some of the legitimate ways, except you get pardoned and they send you home and you, or you die, well, Give, well, what are the other ways you can get out? Well, ra ransom is one of them, and another one is uh, the breakdown of the... Uh, the prison compound being taken over and number one is an exchange of prisoners and uh, you go on and on in other words there are basic uh, legitimate ways thank you number one you mentioned you're an instructor of survival invasion resistance what what is that the acronym seri s-e-r-e -E, stands for survival evasion resistance and escape yes sir uh, num number two, uh, are you taught in this survival and resistance, are you taught the manual arts of not self-offense, as it were? I am an instructor in this, uh, in this program. Uh, how much, how much, what is the uh, amount of money on your head, sir? A million what? It was one. It's a million won, which is the, the uh, value, the currency that's used in Korea. Korea, the gentleman says, if indeed he is the right one, that takes us to Peg. Uh, have we established number one? Are you an American Air Force major? Hey, hey, who are you talking to? Number you, number one. Oh, I was. Uh, but you are, in fact, an, it was, you were with the American Armed Forces. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Number two, is it legitimate to dig a hole like in the movies and come out on the other side of the fence? I think that only happens in the movies. Oh. Oh, no kidding. Gee, I thought that was, you got your shovel and went right to work. Well, there you are. <laughs> uh, now, what... 
Now, about this survival, evasion, resistance, and escape, is that number three? Is that a course we teach in the Army? That is correct. We lecture in uh, various installations around the country. Huh. Well, survival is to keep uh, alive. What's evasion? To avoid arrest, or once you are alive, to continue on your merry way. Well, I hope... Well, now, number one, what did you do that they put all these quongs on your head? I would like to evade that question using the number, number two technique by simply pointing out that it's a classified, it's sort, of, sort of a sensitive well, subject. Well, number two, in other words, did you, what, did you, what you do was legitimate or illegitimate? It certainly was. No, I was active in the guerrilla <laughs> resistance. He said he was active in the group of resistance is the answer of number two. Uh, Bennett Surf, you're up next. Uh, number one, A.G. Young, if that's who you are, how did you get captured? It was an ambush. Where? In France. Behind the lines? There were no lines at the time. There were no lines? You mean... Well, it was a spearheading operation. Before the Moving lines operation. Were before? Fluid. Before? Fluid, I think, is the term they use. Number two, were you captured before D-Day? Well, I was in another theater of war. I was in Korea, and my plane went down above the 38th parallel. Number three, where were you captured? I was in Korea, too. Two of you were captured in Korea and one in France. Very interesting. Uh, <laughs> number three, Major, are you a West Pointer? No, sir. Are you number two? No, I'm not. Are you number one? No, I am not. Well, number three, how did you get to be a Major? Went up the ranks. You got, got my commission as a lieutenant, and then became a Major after due work effort. Where did you go to officer's training school? Randolph. Number one, could I ask you the same question? How did you get to be a, a major? I took my basic training at uh, Fort Knox, Kentucky, and also came up through the ranks. Number two. Okay, Bennett, on that information, we must form an opinion. Who do you think? Is it number one? Or do you think it's number two? Or what about number three? In any event, it's going to cost you $50 for each wrong guess, $500 if none of the guesses is correct. I presume the ballots are marked, and let's start with Kitty. Well, I'm voting for number three. I think he looks like a soldier of fortune. Number <laughs> three, and Bill Cullen. You know, just last week, I wandered into a studio that we had booked at NBC, and Gene Rayburn was interviewing oh, no. this gentleman. For Monitor? For Monitor, yes. And I, I, I saw him. I spent about eight minutes looking at the back of his head, and I didn't think it was fair to ask them all to turn around. And let me see the back of his head. You but never I, saw his face? No, but I did recognize the voice. And it's a fabulous story, and he's an intensely interesting person. I disqualify myself. Anyway. So on the fact that you recognize his voice, you got a disqualification. Uh, yes, I'm sure okay. I know who it is. That's fair yes. enough. And one disqualification counts as one wrong vote, as always. And that takes us to uh, Peggy Cass. Rats, because one is the most identifiable voice. I bet it's one. But I voted for three because they don't have quongs in France. One... But I think they have Kwong's three, you know, in a Korea, so I voted for Kwong three. Oh, okay. <laughs> so there are two, two votes for the Kwongs on three, and Bennett, what are you going to do? Well, I never thought of that. I, I'm a little bit ashamed now, but uh, when I was a second lieutenant, the best fed men in the place were majors, and number one looks like the best fed of these three to me. <laughs> so I picked number one. And that's why you wanted to know how he got to be a major. <laughs> All right, and that does it. So now we're going to find out who's right and who's wrong. Will the real Major Keith Douglas Young please stand up? Be one. There you go, man. Oh, you did it! 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 You did it. Oh, that's fun! <laughs> nice shot, Bennett. We'll be back to you, Major, in just a moment. Let's find out about number two, sir. What is your real name, please, and what do you do? My name is Don Schwartz. I'm the president of one of five corporations headed by the Collier Associates Company. We erect high-rise curtain wall, and we're working presently at the World Trade Center. Nice to have you. And number three, I'm awful glad that he got two votes. What did you find out? What is your name, sir, and what do you do? I'm Len Miller. I'm a vice president at U.S. Media International. We're a media buying service, and we are the originators of negotiating commercials to be put on the air for you panelists. And so... Hey. <laughs> sure you can. Kitty's got something you want to ask the I major. want to ask the major, how come he had a price on his head in Quangs if he was arrested behind the lines in France? It's a rather long story. I was in France, I was in Korea, and I recently returned from Vietnam. I've had the three wars. I see. Well, 
Well, bravo. So, in other, other words, your, your prisoner of war ship in, in France had nothing to do with your activities in Korea, nor nothing to do with the price that was put on your head. They were the bad guys wherever they were. Yeah. The price is still there. Well, I want to tell you, and it was interesting, Bennett, you said that he was the, you know, the healthiest looking one. He sat up all night, just got off the airplane just in time to get here. He came all the way in from California. Major Keith Young is a man of many parts indeed. Just, just listen to this. By writing a simple little poem, he won the Pimm's Cup Lord of the Manor contest and was actually invested at Runham Clears as, what else, Lord of the Manor. Thank you. Heard the question, who would you give the hundred dollars to? The taxi driver, the police department, or to yourself? Did you say Phyllis? Yes, I did. Oh. I, um... Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? I think we have some kind of a force here. <laughs> Uh, it was your lousy food, Bert. <laughs> <laughs> Tattletales, weekdays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, only on Game Show Network. It's amazing. Hey, we're running real late. We really got to knock it off. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time. So long, panel. So long, bye. Transportation and other considerations provided by Chevrolet, featuring the 1971 Chevelle American most popular mid-sized car. New bumpers and grills, same solid, dependable performance at a Chevrolet price. Hotel accommodations, courtesy of Delmonico's Hotel on Fashionable Park Avenue, ideal for gracious living. Visit famous Delmonico's restaurant for superb continental cuisine. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, a Mark Goodson, Bill Totman production. Now, stay tuned for What's My Line with Larry Blyden, next on Game Show Network, America's favorite place to watch, play, and win. It's time to...